Gaming Enthusiasts, how are you doing? I hope you're all well, welcome back. In today's update, we're gonna take the wheel arches off the other side because I didn't do it last week. Uh, we're gonna strip down the back end of the car. That should be quite straightforward. And I think, time permitting, we're gonna get um, the carpets and most of the interior out. So we get a really good look at that floor and see if it genuinely is in good condition. Before we get into that though, uh, just a subscriber shout out, subscriber thank you. So one of the subscribers to the GAP channel, a guy called uh, David, uh, David Germany, very kindly contacted me and he um, sent me some training material from a training course he went on in Abingdon in 1973. So this is his own training material. It's uh, training for the automatic gearbox on minis. I think they're, correct me if I'm wrong, this has got an AP1 gearbox in it. I really don't know much about mini autos. I'm sure I will by the end of this project though. So David sent me his original training documents that he filled in in 1973. It's got all his handwriting in, his notes, his assessment in there. It's just amazing. Uh, I love this sort of stuff grubby fingerprints on it as well, just for a bit of authenticity. I'm gonna have a read through with that. I'm sure it'll come in useful. It's got settings and tests you can do for oil pressure and lists some common faults as well. So it's just a, a nice bit of history to have. So thank you very much for that. I don't know whether it makes any difference, but I've also got a new GoPro as well. So I've got the GoPro Hero 9. So we're filming this on the Hero 9. I don't actually think it's gonna make a great deal of difference with this sort of video because I used to film in uh, 2K and 4K anyway. Hopefully the sound will be a bit better because the mic's improved, uh, but they certainly have, they have this hyper smooth on it. So certainly when I'm doing round the car shots and that, it should look so much more smoother, almost like it's on a gimbal now. So, uh, Hear lots of subscribe or lots of YouTubers say they put all their money back into the channel. I have. <laughs> Everything I've earned from the channel this year has just bought me a GoPro. So thanks YouTube. That's you guys watching those annoying videos at the beginning. <laughs> Actually pays about 0.01p per advert. So it all adds up eventually. And I've managed to get a new GoPro. I've kept the old GoPro, so it's over there. So hopefully it'll just make the videos a little bit more interesting because I'll be able to film from two angles, which I could do before, but took a bit of setting up. So uh, yeah, um, hopefully that'll just make the production quality a little bit better and a little bit more interesting to watch. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention as well, bear with me. <coughs> So these mirrors, these are as Paul Jeffries from Classic Mini Garage quite rightly pointed out to me, they're Tex mirrors. So they're actually stamped on the bottom of them, Tex. You might have, um, if you watch the earlier episodes, I wanted to put standard mirrors back on, which are the black ones, bear with me. So these are the black plastic mirrors, which would have come from, from factory. Obviously they look quite a bit different because one's shiny and one's not. But what I did find when I took these text mirrors off, they had uh, drilled holes into the doors. So I've got an extra hole in the top of the door, which like I said, to fix that really, I need to weld that hole up, which will burn all the paint around it. So I'll end up painting the tops of the doors or it will end up looking different. I'll have to paint the whole door. So I really don't want to do that. But um, again, one of the subscribers, thank you, Bjorn. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce your surname. Uh, I assume you're probably from Norway or somewhere like that. Um, but yeah, Bjorn uh, sent me a link in the comments, actually. They do these text mirrors in a matte black. So they'll look very, very similar to these. So. I might do that. That means I can fit the matte black mirrors. It will still look pretty standard. You know, it'd be hard to tell that they are different and I'm not gonna have to weld the top of the door. Um, so yeah, that's enough of me waffling for this week. Let me get on to it.
Right then, see how we get on with this GoPro. So this is on hyper smooth boost. And I'll tell you what, I'm just holding the camera by hand. So normally this would be wobbly as anything. And I would have to edit it in post to try and smooth it all out. So we see how it goes. But yeah, again, behind those wheel arches, really good condition. I've actually found the first bit of kind of, I guess you'd call it proper bodywork rust, but it is only right on the surface. Bottom of that A panel there. But yeah, it's a tiny little bit. Whoever last put these arches on, I saw this on the other arch, they scratched them all over the place. They really did make a mess of putting them on. But again, all the way around here, same place, tiny, tiny little bit of rust there, but this front part is getting painted anyway. So brilliant, no hidden surprises under there. So let's get on with the interior now.
Right, so the back end is not a problem really, it's not in bad condition, but it has had a really naff paintwork on the back here. I thought it was just this corner they've done, but they've done the whole boot. As you can see, even the double-sided tape underneath, they haven't taken off, they've just sprayed over it. They haven't taken the number plate light out, they've sprayed around it. I mean, how difficult is that to take out? They sprayed around the badges. Um, they sprayed around the fog light. Uh, yeah, just a rubbish paint job sprayed around the headlights. Sorry, the rear lights. So all this is going to have to be painted again, I think. Um, rubbed back. They've not made a good job of the paintwork. And like I say, it's not really a good way to paint that. Painting around things, you're better off taking them off. So yeah, we've got a bit of work to do there. But good news is no real rot. This lip here, again, you can see all the original spot welds along there. So yeah, it's obviously had a tiny bit of rust on the lip there, but it isn't structural really. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. Right, so inside the boot itself, pretty pleased with that. Had to take the tank out because the fuel pipe on the bottom, it was an old like fabric covered pipe and where it moved, it had just split it so it started leaking. So I temporarily just put a new pipe on that just so I can put the tank back in for moving it around getting it in and out of the garage pretty pleased with that i think i've said before the boot floor has been painted in here but again like the back of the car they didn't remove things to paint it they just painted around things so like you know overspray on the nuts there's overspray on the wiring loom i don't think it's two packs so hopefully i can just clean that off with some thinners so wiring loom's good apart from that, but yeah, just frustrating that someone doesn't do a job properly. This side of the boot floor and car is spot on. You're never quite sure behind the tank whether it started rotting behind there, but that has, doesn't look like it's had work in the past. But yeah, just generally wants a good tidy up in, the, in there. It's all scratched up at the back. So we do the same as what we've done on Sprout and I've done on Vinny before. We'll just clean all this up. <laughs> we will take stuff out and we'll spray the whole lot so it looks like new. Right, so probably two, two hours or so off camera, just stripping out the inside of the car. Got to say, really, really pleased with it. I didn't expect to find any surprises, any nasty bits and there isn't any here so yeah I'm pretty pleased with that I some might question why I've stripped the inside out because it is in such good condition from my sort of initial expect inspection it didn't look like it needed welding anywhere and yeah once all the interior is now stripped out um, it doesn't the floor pan's a bit dented here we need to sort out it's a bit dented over the other side I want to try and keep this original sound deadening but uh, quite honestly, this is structurally the best condition Mini I've ever owned in 25, well, knocking on 30 years actually, showing my age there. Um, yeah, best Mini I've owned in, it's probably exactly 28. Um, apart from a brand new Mini, I did buy a brand new Mini back in 1998. But apart from that, I've, I've probably owned 20 plus minis and this is the best condition out of all of them. So really, really pleased about that. Um, as I say, filming this on the no, new GoPro Hero 9 seems to be okay. I need to fit, play around with the colours a little bit though, because the blue on it is like really, really bright. If I get in here, I think I've shown this before, but inside the door pockets, look at that. Like a new car that is both sides uh, the only bit I haven't stripped out I've not stripped out these bits of trim I'll probably leave them because they're glued on I'll just give them a clean parcel shelf I haven't got out yet it's actually got small rivets up in I put the back here which I'm going to have to take the rear screen out to get to those rivets but that's the original parcel shelf it just needs a clean up I do need to fix the heated rear window this has broken off 
the connection on the back there, so that might be a bit of a pain to repair. But yeah, aside from that, I've got the heater box out, the heater matrix, all the sound insulation under here. Uh, I didn't necessarily need to take the heater box out, but to get all that sound insulation out without cutting it and wrecking it, you've got to take the box out. And really, it's a um, 34 year old heater matrix, I'm sure it's probably going to be a little bit rusty in the bottom. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Like I say, everything's up in the loft now, so that's come in really handy just for storage space. And not quite sure what next, actually. So we've got most of the bodywork stripped off. I guess probably it is maybe taking the engine out next. Um, engine and front end. <clears throat> I'm still in two minds, really. I don't want to paint the whole car. I want to keep it as original as possible and a lot of it doesn't need paint but it does want a bit of paint at the back and it does want a bit of paint at the front I just I kind of don't want to get carried away and end up doing the whole car because I don't it doesn't really need it when I mean, you look at this side this quarter panel you know this it's just amazing condition this car absolutely amazes me and again I think I've said in previous videos there's bare metal there and that's months now, and that's not gone rusty yet. It's almost like, you know, if this was a modern car, it's like a modern car where the, the body panels are galvanised. They don't rust, or it takes them a very, very long time to rust. These were not galvanised shells, but they must have been made from good metal because a later car would have just rotted away by now. So I'm really pleased with that. It's going really well. Um, yeah. Give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, do consider subscribing. If you want to drop me a comment down the bottom, I respond to all my comments. And yeah, if there's anything else you want to know. And we'll be back again Wednesday for something a bit different. We're going to have a bit of an update video on Project Bolt, I think, or Bolt, the race car. It's not a project anymore because it's finished. It's been finished for a few years, but it's had a few significant upgrades. So see you again soon.